I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that God Himself will speak to everyone at the point of your need in leadership in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the leadership development tonight. We're asking, Lord, you speak to every heart, promote everyone, lift up everyone, and take us to the place you are destined or danger for every one of us to be in Jesus' name. We give you the glory, and we know it's going to be done. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're coming to Esther chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 1. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Amadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they speak daily, daily, every day unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, they told, that he told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand. For he had said, he had told them that he was a Jew. He had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought it scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. As we read the story in the whole book of Esther, I will see the beginning. We couldn't have imagined what the end will be. Mordecai himself did not know what the end will be. Esther did not know what the end will be. And all the Jews, not only in the gate, at the gate and around that city, in all the 127 provinces of the empire, none of them knew what the final end will be. I said that to tell you this, as you look at your life, and you look at the little beginning, the small beginning, and you look at all the things that surround you, you cannot tell, and nobody can tell you what the end will be. Your end is going to be greater than your beginning. And the outcome of what we do, the outcome, of the little obedience we give to the Lord, you can never tell how the end will come to a high point. So let me take you to the end before I go back to the beginning. Esther chapter 10, verse 3. Esther chapter 10, verse 3. For Mordecai the Jew was next to the king Ahasuerus and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. That's the end. 
a glorious end. And your end will be glorious in Jesus' name. As we look at the whole story, Mordecai was an unbendable, unbreakable, uncompromising champion who stood for divinely revealed truth on the fierce persecution. As you look at the persecution and the action of the man, and he was under intense persecution, fiery persecution, a kind of persecution you think will destroy the man even the following day. Yet the man, without knowing what will become of him, he took his stand. You will take your stand. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Because if you don't stand up for Jesus, you will fall for Satan and you will fall with Satan. If you don't stand for the truth, you will fall for falsehood. If you don't stand in righteousness, you will fall into unrighteousness. If you compromise before Haman, you will be condemned with Haman. If you compromise on this day of challenge, this day of trial, and this day of persecution, if you compromise with Haman, you will be condemned with Haman. Mordecai was neither a prophet nor a priest. He did not see a vision of the future. Neither did he hear a voice from heaven. All he had was the limited reaching word that he had been taught was sufficient to stand on. Moses obviously had died before Mordecai was born. Because these children of Israel, the people of Judah, many years have passed. Moses is gone, Joshua is gone, and David is gone, and now they were taken to captivity. And it was in that captivity that all these things began to happen. And even though he had nothing except the reaching word, he stood on that reaching word, and God honored him. And as we stand on the reaching word, the Bible, the Holy Bible, the Lord will honor you. You stand with the Lord, the Lord will stand by you. You stand for the truth, and the truth will stand by you in Jesus' name. I read to you what happened. It was a small sin. Apparently, a negligible sin. Somebody is passing by. His name is Haman. And then the king had said, when you see him start going by, stand up. When you see him going by, reverence him. That's all. But Haman was looking for everybody to obey that little small command. And for him, a little man is satisfied with a little thing. That just standing up and bowing down and making reverence, that made a stay. And you can tell when somebody is small. You can tell when somebody is little. Even though he has a high position, the little thing you meet to do creates a great problem for such a man, on the other hand, we have Mordecai. He had looked at the commandments of God. He had looked at conviction coming from the word of God. And he said, if the whole body of a man is very important, and the little nail in the finger, one finger, is very important, and you will not think of removing that little nail it says, as I look at all the commandments of God, here is a little nail, here is a little commandment. Just stand up and bend before the man, but God forbids me to do that. Negligible, 
very small. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to obey God rather than man. I'm talking to you tonight on unwaveringly standing up for God's revealed truth. Standing up for God's revealed truth uncompromisingly, unwaveringly, whatever the skies may fall, whatever the sea may roar, whatever Satan may threaten, but a child of God looking at the word of God and unwaveringly, uncompromisingly, fearlessly standing on God's revealed truth. As I look at the chapters we're looking at today, there are three things. Number one, the conviction and courage of a single-minded non-conformist. Non-conformist. Who is a non-conformist? He sees other people bending. He sees other people bowing. He sees other people falling on their faces before the man. And he alone will not conform a non-conformist. The conviction of such a man, the courage of such a man, of a single-minded non-conformist. Point number two, the cooperation and cross-bearing of a supportive congregation. Now understand, the Jews were scattered throughout 127 provinces and as a result of the stand as a result of the commitment as a result of the congregation of this single man Mordecai all the lives of all the people the Jews the lives were threatened and the whole of them congregation here Congregation here, congregation here in 127 what we call regions. In 127 provinces, the stench of Mordecai threatened their lives, and none of them sent message to Mordecai saying, Slow it down, our lives are in danger. Modify your stand. Our lives are in danger. Reverse your decision. Our lives are in danger. What's the matter, Mordecai? We're going, we're sending a committee to you. When this committee comes to you, please, because of all the Jews in all the 127 provinces, listen. Don't be so hot-headed that just to stand up and to bench before a man, what does that do to you? You can stand. You may not agree in your heart. You can say, in my heart, I don't stand. In my mind, I don't stand. But to fulfill all righteousness and let life go on, please, for our sakes, bench for the man. None in the congregation, no single soul, no single member, no single citizen went to appeal to the man to go slowly and to go patiently and to reverse what he was doing. The congregation cooperated. It brought a cross to them. He brought a challenge to them. He brought difficulties to them. He brought the threats of death unto them. But they said that is the truth. Very small part of the truth. It's not one of the Ten Commandments really. It's just a little thing, a nail in a finger. But that man is doing the right thing. We'll cooperate with him even though we have to bear the cross, a supportive congregation. Point number three, the commendation and the crowning of a sanctified conqueror. The commendation 
and the crowning of his sanctified conqueror. You'll not have any doubt in your mind, Mordecai was a conqueror. You'll be a conqueror. I said you'll be a conqueror. Whatever it will take for the mind and the spirit and the backbone of a conqueror to be developed in you, you'll be a conqueror in Jesus' name. One day at a time, one trial at a time, one challenge at a time, one difficulty at a time, and one sorrow at a time, one sadness at a time, one day at a time, as the hours pass by, as the days pass by, and you stand today, this moment, and you confirm who you are, a conqueror, a champion, this moment, the moments will go to days, the days will go to weeks, the weeks will go to months, the months will go to years, as we come to the end of time. You are being a sanctified, selfless, unbendable, conqueror, and champion, and so you, will you be. I said, so will you be. The commendation and the crowning of a sanctified conqueror. Point number one, the conviction and courage of a single-minded conformist. Come back to chapter 3. In chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 2. And all the king's servants that were in the king's cage bowed and reverenced him and all of them without exception. What if all the denominations of churches in our country? What if all the denominations of churches in our continent, Africa? What if they bow? What if they, re they reject the word of God and say, that's a small thing. That's a small area. It will make us unpopular. If we take a stand on this little thing, it will make us unacceptable if we take a stand on this small thing. And everybody in all the churches of all the denominations, they bend and they bow. Because after all, it's a little thing. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced him, for the king had so commanded concerning him. The king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not and did not did him reverence one man. Out of the whole park, one man out of all the officers, one man out of all the people at the gate, and the audacity, and the courage, and the conviction, and the backbone, saying, Everybody may bow or bend, I will not. I will not. I will not. Verse 4. Now it came to pass when they spoke daily unto him. They spoke daily unto him. He hearkened not unto them. And he told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters what stand for he had said he had told them what did he tell them tell us now that he was a Jew they put pressure on him they said I am a Jew I'm not like you that's why you bow I am different I'm distinct. I am 
a Jew. What makes a person different? What makes him act different? What makes him stand on something that all the other people are falling? What makes him uncompromising? What makes him unbendable? I am a Jew. I am a Christian. We are Christians too, not like that. I am a Christian. I am a disciple. We are disciples too. We are following Jesus, not like that. I am a disciple. What makes a person different? I am a convert, a true convert, a genuine convert, a biblical convert. What makes a person stand alone even when many people are against him and they are proving to him that he's wrong and they say he's eccentric. They say he's gone berserk. They say he's not of the race of the rest of the people. It is the statement, I am a Bible believer. And I believe every judge, and I believe every teacher, and I believe every part, and I believe the smallest part, and I will not take away a teacher or a judge from the world. I am a Bible believer. That's what makes the man different. That was making woman different. I am a Jew. Look at Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 3. We're looking at verse 1. What advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision much in every way chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Much in every way. What makes the Jew different? Because unto the Jews and Mordecai saw himself were the custodian of revelation, the custodian of the truth. The deposit, the Lord that deposited the truth, the everlasting truth, the saving truth, the truth by which all nations, all men will be judged on the final day. And because of that, having received that commitment, it says, I know who I am. I am a Jew. And I cannot behave like you are behaving. Look at chapter 9 of Romans. Romans chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. I am a Jew. The promises have been given to us. The precepts have been given to us. The commandments have been given to us. The life-saving truth revelation has been given to us. I am a Jew. And because of that, I cannot bow. I cannot bend like all the people do. Romans chapter 2. Verse 29. Romans chapter 2, verse 29. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. I am a Jew. I'm not looking for praise from any man on earth. I'm not looking for recommendation from any man on earth. Internally, I am a Jew. In my thoughts, I am a Jew. 
in my way of life i am a jew i have the word i have the revelation i have the truth and because i am a jew circumcised in the heart inwardly and i see myself very different from everybody else because of that i cannot do what the others are doing what gave him that concept what gave him that condition of heart what gave him that commitment in his soul look at deuteronomy chapter 4 i will read from verse 7 deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7 i am a jew i am different i am distinct i am of a peculiar species i am of a different conviction deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7 for what nation is there so great who has god so nice unto them as the lord our god is in all things that we call upon him for and what nation is there so great that has the statutes and judgment so righteous as all this law which i set before you this day you see that moses told them go through all the nations of the world up down north south east west all over the world you will not find another nation so privileged so upright so favored so committed and so graciously chosen by the lord to give us all this law to give us all this word that's why Mordecai said, I am a Jew. To us is committed the word in a way it's not being committed to any other man, any other nation, any other province, any other peculiar people. But it's been given to us. Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 13 nehemiah chapter 9 reading from verse 13 i am a jew in nehemiah chapter 9 reading from verse 13 it says thou camest down also upon mount sinai and speakest with them from heaven you spoke with our forefathers from heaven you spoke with the jewish nation from heaven and gave us them right judgments right judgments we don't look at what the other nations are doing and we don't try to compare what we have with what they have if they are different they're wrong we have the right judgments and if in anything if any principle if there's any practice if there's any doctrine any teaching which they hold different from what we hold we are right they are wrong that's what this Mordecai knew. That's why he said, you go ahead and bow. I cannot. I am a Jew. It goes on to say, you have given us true judgments, right judgments, and true laws, good statutes and commandments, and made us known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest them precepts and statutes and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant. Look at Psalm 147. 
Psalm 147, reading from verses 19 and 20. I am a Jew. I have the conviction that I cannot change, that I cannot modify, and I have the principle I will not change, I will not modify. Why? Because we have the right judgments. We have the true statutes. And we have the good laws of the law. And because of that, if anybody is to change, the people that have different laws and different statutes and different, uh, law, different uh, judgments, they are the people to change. I am a Jew. I have something eternal. Look at Psalm 147, verse 19. He shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and judgments unto Israel. Look at this, verse 20, very important. He has not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. They don't have the complete truth. They don't have the complete revelation. They don't have a word or the word that cannot change. Because God has not dealt so with any other nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. I cannot hear our people. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah in your life, in your mouth, in your family, in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Reading from verse 8. Daniel chapter 3. We're reading from verse 8. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. What are they going to say? Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet and other musical instruments, verse 11, whoso falleth not down and worshippers, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. There are certain Jews. There are certain Jews. Did you have the conviction, the commitment? We are Jews. We don't do what the Babylonians do. We don't bench what the Babylonians bench to. We are Jews. Look at verse 15. Now, if you be ready, at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet and all the other musical instruments, if you fall down, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. And who is that God? Ignorant people speak and they blow out their ignorance. They may be as high as Nebuchadnezzar. And they may be as big, as proud Nebuchadnezzar. If they are ignorant of the God of the Jews, they'll bellow out, they'll vomit out their shame. And they will say things that you'll wonder, how can a man say such a thing? Have they not read history? When Pharaoh said exactly the same thing, and he drowned in the sea. But he said, Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Abednego or the coolness of a non-conformist or the backbone of a non-conformist or the assurance the courage of a non-conformist and said and said to the king O Nebuchadnezzar we're not careful to answer thee in this matter if it be so our God who we serve he tell me is able to deliver us from the burning furry furnace and he will deliver us those are Jews talking those are Jews they've seen miracles that no other nation had seen they've seen plagues coming upon Egypt that no other nation had seen they seen river, the Red Sea divided like no other nation had seen. They seen the sun coming to a standstill that no other nation had seen. They seen one angel coming in one night, destroying 185 enemies, 85,000 of them in one night like no other nation had seen. They say fire coming down from heaven and burning the captain and his 50 first time, second time, third time. And because of what they knew, they said, Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Were they delivered? Will you be delivered? Will you be free? I am a Jew. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 27. Acts chapter 5, verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you? that ye should not teach in this name and behold ye have filled jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us then peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to be god rather than men we are disciples, we are followers of Christ, the one who walked on the sea, the one who raised the dead, the one who died and God raised him up the third day. And there is no religion like this one. There is no master like this one. There is no redeemer like this one. There is no master, there is no Lord than this one, we are apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that, they stood. I will stand. I said, I will stand. You will stand in Jesus' name. Job chapter 27. In Job chapter 27, Verses 5 and 6. Job 27, verse 5. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. Till I die. Till I die. That's a person who knows that God is following. He knows why he's not bending. He knows why he's not bowing. He knows why he's standing on the rock of ages. And he says, till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast. I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Revelation 
chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 25. Revelation chapter 2. Reading from verse 25. But that which ye have already hold fast until when? Hold fast until when? Until I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Point number two now. I want to look at the congregation. What was their attitude? What was their reaction to the stand of Mordecai? And this stand of Mordecai was not only affecting him, Mordecai, affecting all the congregations in the 127 provinces in the empire. Point number two. The cooperation and cross-bearing of a supportive congregation. Come to chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai wrenched his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate closed with sackcloth and in every province 127 of them in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and this decree came there was great money among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes I want you to think through on those words we read just now. The stand of Mordecai brought persecution to all the congregations in all the 127 provinces in the whole empire. Yet, they all agreed with him. It's one thing to be sorrowful and then change. One thing to be sad and then turn around. One thing to cry and then compromise. One thing to weep and then fall. One thing to be so sad that to change your conviction. But you know these people, yes, they cried. They had to cry because the edict had gone out that all of them on a particular day will be totally eradicated, annihilated, destroyed, not one of them remaining. Because of that, they cried. They cried and wept, but they would not compromise. Don't let your tears turn to the tears of compromise. They were sad and sorrowful, but they will not compromise. The pressure was high on them. They felt the pressure, and they felt the end had come. And no prophet rose up to say, no, it will not happen. They were 
so sorrowful, they mourned and they fasted, but, but, but they would not compromise. No one advised Mordecai to reconsider his stand. No, they would not compromise. They seemed hopeless in a helpless situation, but they would not compromise. No group said, it's a small matter. Let's choose a committee of wise men. This man is not wise. He needs some wisdom. And if he doesn't have any wisdom of his own, let's lend him some wisdom. Nobody said that. No group said that. No pressure group came to Mordecai in their sorrow, in their sadness, in their tears, in their problem, in their persecution, in the threats. He took their stand. You'll take your stand. You see, some things may happen that can cause sorrow, sadness, grief, challenge, pressure. That's not the point. And we're not looking at today. We're looking at the future. Somebody there, we're looking at the future. I said, you are looking at the future. And it was that future that made them, that in spite of their sorrow, in spite of their sadness, in spite of the persecution, they will not change. I will not change. Say it. I will not change. I will earnestly contend for the faith was delivered unto the saints let heaven hear you i will earnestly contend for the faith was delivered unto the saints mordecai and all the members of all the congregations in all the provinces were united, they were one, they were indivisible, indivisible. Why? Exodus chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 3. Exodus chapter 24, reading from verse 3. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. All the words of the Lord, some of those words appeared small, little, some were big, of great consequence. And Moses told them all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said will we do. And Mordecai and all the congregations of those 127 provinces were of that same mind. All the words which the Lord had said will we do. Come to verse 7. In verse 7, and he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. They said, We don't have any opinion of our own. We don't have any commandment of our own. We don't have any idea of our own, whatever the Lord has said, small or great, affecting big areas of our lives or affecting just a small, minute area of our lives. All that the Lord has said, we will do. You'll be of the same conviction in Jesus' name. And when a Mordecai rises up and you obeys the word of God 
and that causes you some persecution in your little family and causes you some persecution in your place of work and causes some pressure group coming to you and putting pressure on you you will not forget your consecration you will not forget your vow all that the Lord has said we will do Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 25 Nehemiah chapter 10 we're reading from verse 25 let's go back one chapter chapter 9 and I'm reading here from verse 25 and he took strong cities and he fetched land and possessed houses full of all good wells did and vineyards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance so they did eat and they were filled they became fat and delighted themselves in thy great goodness yet all the same they remembered the word they told the lord will obey the word of god i will obey the word of god riches will not turn you aside wealth will not turn you aside High position will not turn your side. Education of the world will not turn your side. Will keep on obeying the word of God in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 4. We're reading from verse 18. Acts chapter 4, verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of jesus but peter and john answered and said unto them whether it be right in the sight of god to hearken unto you more than unto god judge ye for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That will be your commitment. That will be our commitment. Verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart, of one soul. The whole congregation agreed with Peter and the rest of the apostles. And even though there were threatenings, and even though there was possible imprisonment, yet they were all with one heart and one soul. Come to chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 1. Chapter 8 of Acts, verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time... There was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Verse 3, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church entering into every house and healing men and women committed them to prison therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing preaching the word you understand they didn't say is the hot headed uncompromising stand of peter of John that brought us to this. They didn't have the wisdom to practice the religion 
and the Christianity Christ left behind was such an understanding and wisdom that persecution like this will not break out. Now we are scattered abroad everywhere and then begin to speak some unprintable words against the apostles. No, there was understanding, cooperation, cross-bearing. All the congregation remained supportive. And the same thing it should be like today. That whatever is the result of the doctrine of Christ and the teaching of Christ, whatever area of doctrine that is, and the stench of the, the people of God on the watch of God, whatever comments you hear outside, whatever persecution may come as a result of that contending for the faith, once delivered unto the saints, we will bear our cross. We will stand our ground. We will obey the Lord and we will not compromise in any way in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. As cross bearing. And when a cross comes in your way, because of taking a stand for the truth, the revealed truth, the written truth, the decreed truth, and the truth Christ as Savior and Lord has revealed unto us. When you stand and there is persecution because of that, you'll bear your cross. You will follow. In verse 25, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mark chapter 8. Verse 38, Mark chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 38. In verse 38, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, when people make fun of your stand, hey, hey, deeper man, deeper woman, he's not bowing. She is not bending. All of us are sinners. All of us are Gentiles. All of us are unbelievers. And he is the only one that knows the truth. They have a different kind of Bible. They have a different kind of doctrine. Doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. Deeper, deeper. You will not be ashamed. Let me hear your amen. You will not be ashamed. Because whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father of the holy angels. Thank God I will not be ashamed. We're looking at Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse eight. Second Timothy, chapter one. We're reading from verse eight. In verse eight, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord 
nor of me his prisoner nor of me his prisoner don't be ashamed but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God verse 12 for the which cause I also suffer these things nevertheless I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You will not be ashamed. In First Peter chapter 4, verse 16. First Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, you're taking his stand, you're taking your stand, and you suffer suffering reproach, suffering insult, suffering assault, suffering abuse, suffering unprintable languages. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them? That will be not the gospel of God. First John chapter 2, verse 28. First John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in Him. We will abide. You will abide. Abide in Him. That when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming on that day crowning day reckoning day when the lord shall come we will not be ashamed just to compromise so be ashamed those who yield will be ashamed. Those who cannot stand for a totality of the truth of the word of God because they forget I am a Jew, they'll be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. We're looking at point number three now. The commendation and the crowning, the coronation of a sanctified Conqueror. A sanctified conqueror. As you look at this man, Mordecai, you will see the sign and the evidence of sanctification with the circumcised and sanctified heart, pure and holy. He did all the good he could without asking for reward or recognition. He wasn't asking for any reward, not asking for any recognition. He just did what he ought to do as a pure, purified, sanctified, circumcised person, selfless and self-effacing. He hated and he exposed evil. He just hated every form of evil. And when he saw that some people were conspiring to lay hands on the king, all he did was to do unto the king as he wanted others to do unto him. If his life was in danger and somebody knew about it, he would want that person to reveal it to him so that he can escape the danger. And he knew that danger was before the king. 
And so he was going to do to the king as he expected other people to do unto him. And so after reporting the matter to protect the king, he went back to his post of duty. Quietly, he lived to glorify God. Without blowing his trumpet, he did unto the king as he would others should do unto him. Seemingly forgotten by man on earth, he was remembered by God on high. At the right time, he was honored, he was crowned. At the right time, you'll be remembered. You'll be crowned. You'll not lose your reward in Jesus' name. Esther chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 21. Esther chapter 2, verse 21. In those days, one Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Two of the king's chamberlains, Bixan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth, they were angry, and sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. And the scene was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. Esther did not take the credit that she would go to Mordecai. He infor she informed the king in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Some people have said that the king was negligent. He only wrote it down in the hand of God that told him, just put it down. The time to bring it out will come. Whatever you do, whatever good thing you do, has gone on record. The time to bring it out will come. My time will come. Chapter 5, verse 9. Then went Haman forth that day, joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai, in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him. He was full of indignation against Mordecai. That's a man of conviction. Because he didn't bow, because he didn't bend, look at the pressure that came. And look at the edict. All the Jews will be destroyed. And Mordecai will be destroyed. Yes, he cried. Yes, he wept. Yes, he mourned. Yes, he fasted. And Esther and her maidens fasted. The fasting did not change Mordecai's action. That the answer to the prayer has not come, did not change Mordecai's principle. That things did not become easier. And that life was still as tough as it was. And the threats were still standing. That did not change Mordecai. That man was a sanctified man. Nothing will change him or bend him. Nothing will change you. This is how we know a child of God. This is how we know somebody who has backbone, who has conviction, who has sanctification, who has an experience with the Lord. 
let's come to verse 14 verse 14 then said Sirish his wife and all his friends unto him let a gallows be made of 50 cubits high and tomorrow speak unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. It's such a nuisance. It's such a rigid fanatic. And because of that, let him die before the others. You'll kill the other Jews later, but his soul, because he remains so rigid and adamant, get rid of him now. Then go thou merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the sin pleased him, and he caused the gallows to be made. Chapter 6. On that night could not the king sleep. Who caused sleeplessness for the king? Tell me, God. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. Why didn't he listen to music? Why didn't he drink wine? He was an unbeliever. Why didn't he bring a one of, you know, maybe Esther or whatever, so that they can have some time together and that will put him to sleep? Who caused him to take the books of the records of the chronicles? Who did that? God. And they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Big Sana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains and keepers at the door who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. There are many things recorded in that a book of records who caused him to read exactly the record of Mordecai. It's God. And the king said, What honor and dignity has been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him there is nothing done for him and the king said who is in the court why did he ask such a question who asked him to who made him to ask such a question god he could have just decided nothing has been done okay this is what will be done but the said, now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Any gallows the Almighty has not prepared for you will not be yours. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, You need to allow him to talk first. Okay, I heard you were at the court at the gate, and you came so early in the morning. There must be something on your heart. Let's, uh, get, let's deal with that first and then we'll go to the matter of the day. No, not at all. No, not at all. Haman, your enemy, will not have such a chance. And the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman sought in his heart, to whom would a king delight to do honor more than myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man 
whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought, which the king used to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head, and let the apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, the next one in honor, that they may array the man without, without whom the king delighted to honor, and bring him on the horseback through the streets of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And who is the man? I said, Who is the man? I am the man. Where is the man? Where is the woman? Look at Bastain. Then the king said unto Haman, Make haste, hurry up, and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai. Tell me what follows. The Jew. I am a Jew. The Jew. I am a Jew. The Jew. Mordecai, the Jew, that sitteth at the king's gate, let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on the horseback through the, the street of the city and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done. This man will not die on the gallows. Thus shall it be done. This man will not come to shame. Thus shall it be done. This man will be honored by heaven and by earth. Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate after such honor after such exhortation after such promotion he came back to the post of duty i will remain at the post of my duty but he man he stayed to his house morning the table had turned Yesterday it was Mordecai morning. Today is the turn of Haman to mourn. Yesterday you were the one crying. Today is the time of your enemy to cry and to weep. He hasted to his house morning and having his head covered with shame. And Haman told Zeresh, his wife and all his friends, every sin that had befallen him, they will fall. Yeah. Then said his wise men and Zeresh, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be of the siege of the Jews, I am a Jew. I am a Jew. You see, it's the Jewish heritage that followed him all through. And then they said, If he be of the seed of the Jews before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him surely fall before him chapter 7 verse 9 and habona one of the chamberlains said before the king behold also 
the gallows 50 cubits high that which a man had made for Mordecai who had spoken good look at that who has spoken good your good works will come out who has spoken good for the king standeth in his in the house of Amon and the king said and the king said and the king said all those who stand against your progress they are gone hang him thereon so they hanged a man not ready to die yet he has not repented he's still full of wrath he's still full of anger he's still full of hatred he's still full of bitterness a man like this was not ready to go to eternity but he lived without salvation so they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. And for Mordecai, that was not the end. For you, that is not the end. Chapter 10, verse 3. Chapter 10. Let me read from verse 2. And all the acts of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai whereunto the king advanced him. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai, tell me. Mordecai, tell me. Now put your name. You, you're forgotten your name. And Mordecai the Jew was next to the king at Hasuerus and was great among the Jews and ascended to the and accepted of the multitudes of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. Promotion. Honor. Crowning. Joy. Happiness. You've got it. It's going to be yours. At the right time, the remembrance of every good thing you have done will come. You will not be forgotten. Rise up and praise the Lord. You will not be forgotten. Stand, stand, up, stand up and tell the Lord, I will not compromise. I will not compromise. I will take my stand on a little thing, on a big thing, on a major thing, on a minor thing. I will take my stand. And then your time of promotion will come. Open your mouth and consecrate yourself to the Lord. You'll be unwavering. You will be uncompromising, unbendable, unbreakable. You will be a champion, single minded champion. You will stand for the truth. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Pray each in. Everything we've heard, pray it in. Everything we've learned, pray it in. And say, Lord, Mordecai is gone. I am here today. I will stand for God's revealed truth. God's reaching truth. God's decreed truth. I will stand. In my office, I will stand. In my family, I will stand. Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints, I will stand. Let the seas roar, I will stand. 
Let thousands of Haman's arise. I will stand. Let opposition come. I will stand. Let the persecutors threaten. I will stand. Unwaveringly standing. Uncompromisingly standing. For the truth of God's word. For the doctrine of God's word. For the revelation of Christ's doctrine. I will stand. You'll be single minded, knowing I am a Jew. I am a Christian. I am a believer, a Bible believer. And I believe the Bible from the beginning to the end. Every judge, every teacher, and when other denominations bend and bow, and you say, that's a small sin, that's a little sin. For me, there'll be nothing small, there'll be nothing minute in the Word of God. I will stand for the truth. No compromise. No changing any part of the word of God. I will leave it out. Not only teach it. Not only preach it. Haman will not have an inroad into my conviction. Conspirators will not have an inroad to my conviction. Everything I learn, everything I hear, I will obey. No punishment or persecution. No insult or assault. No ridicule or difficulty will change my mind. I will stand. Any law that comes contrary to the law of God, I reject. Any personality that comes in between me and my Savior and my Lord, I reject. Any edict that comes between me and the eternal word of God, I reject. I will stand. And let the whole congregation stand. Let the whole congregation cooperate. Let every member in all the congregations, in all the regions, in all the states, in all the nations, anyone that names the name of the Lord in the church God has raised up as deep and life Bible church, let everyone take the same stand. And whatever cross comes, bear the cross. Whatever challenge comes, as a result of standing, bear the challenge. Whatever name calling, whatever abusive language, whatever ridicule, whatever jest, the make of your name, of the name of the church, make up your mind that you'll have the grace to stand. Stand. Stand courageously. Stand 
uncompromisingly stand in obedience to the truth, the words that cannot change stand. Let all the pressure groups try to make Mordecai to change, let all those pressure groups dissolve. If you know any group anywhere trying to make the church compromise, go to them and with the strength and energy of a living faith, dissolve them. Dissolve them so that Mordecai and all the members of all the churches, congregations will remain indivisible, united, they will be one. Don't fall, stand. Don't cringe, stand. Don't compromise, stand. Don't give up, stand. And then, your day of commendation, your day of coronation, your day of crowning, welcome. Day of reckoning, when all the good you've done, when a stand you have taken. When you're standing up for Christ, will come into the open. And commendation will come. Reward will come. Recognition will come. Eternal joy will come. Eternal rewards will come. Keep on standing until that day. Saved, sanctified, steadfast, immovable, incorruptible. Keep on standing. In Jesus' name we pray. Standing believers, uncompromising believers, unbendable believers, unwavering believers, I said in Jesus' name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the record in your word. Thank you because you brought it to us today so that the same strength of character and the same backbone of conviction and the same unbendable mind, heart, spirit, and soul will be given to us. We thank you because of this revelation. We're asking, O oh Lord, you're strengthening everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. That spirit in Mordecai, that strength in Mordecai, that steadfastness in Mordecai, grant to every brother and every sister tonight in Jesus' name. The past is gone. Weakness of the past, gone. Delete that in, in the past, gone. The weakness of the past, all forgotten in Jesus' name. A new strength in everyone. New power in everyone. New boldness in everyone. And Lord, we pray for every brother, every sister, everyone that has sat the watch tonight. We will stand. 
And Lord, we pray every good thing your people do, small or great, every good thing your people do, public or private, every good thing your people do in ministry and ministration, I pray it will go to your good record. Here on earth, like it happened to Mordecai, you give every one of your children, every one of your servants, appropriate reward and recognition in Jesus' name. Yonder in heaven, no brother will lose his reward. No sister will lose her reward. Everyone here tonight and all those who are part and shared this teaching with us. Lord, I pray special protection for everyone. And those who want to raise gallows, those who want to dig pits, those who want to kill them by one way or the other, death will pass over you. Their gallows will not, make, will not be made for you. You will live all your days out. And more time will be given to you to fulfill the will of God in your life in Jesus' name. You will not die young. You will not die prematurely. And any sin, any arrow of the devil, any gallows from the devil, whether spiritual attack or physical, I cancel them in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Almighty God, bring all those gallows down. And let your people live long in Jesus' name. And bless all the work of their hand. Joy. Peace. Happiness. Success. Honor. Commendation. Long life. Usefulness. Profitability and productivity be unto everyone one and all in jesus name thank you lord for the answer it is done in jesus name we pray